Good afternoon, Steve. Uh, thanks very much for coming here this afternoon. First of all, let me congratulate you on becoming uh, on being appointed the new chairman of Study Group 15. Thank you, Toby. Um, I hesitate to call you a, a veteran of Study Group 15, but uh, you're certainly very familiar with the, the workings of, of, of this, this very important group to ITUT. I was wondering if you could give us an idea of some of the highlights from the, 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 the previous uh, study period and perhaps give us a, help us paint a picture of the work of Study Group 15. Okay. Uh, study Group 15, as you know, is the largest and most active of the ITU study groups. We tend to regularly draw about 370 delegates to our meetings. And Study Group 15 is responsible for uh, really all of the major aspects of network infrastructure, starting from the, the core networks, the long-haul transport networks, uh, DWDM line systems, if you will, down into metro networks access networks and now in the last study period extending that further into home networks. And uh, really as, as we know the, the growth in uh, data traffic is, uh, is massive uh, around the world and at all levels of the network that affects the work that we do. So some of the real accomplishments in the last period are uh, are pushing uh, all aspects of those uh, uh, transmission rates in all parts of the network higher and higher. So in the uh, in the core networks, we've uh, moved to uh, 100 gigabit per second uh, speeds per wavelength on uh, on multiple wavelength fibers, uh, and that uh, works in the long haul and in the uh, in the metro networks. Uh, down into home networking, uh, we have uh, a couple of technologies that we're responsible for. As you know, the DSL family of standards uh, uh, bringing uh, access into the home uh, over copper cable uh, infrastructure. Uh, every time we think that that, uh, that has reached a ceiling, uh, people figure out a way to push it even higher. So. Uh, the VDSL uh, 2 with, uh, with vectoring uh, pushes up to uh, uh, about uh, 250 megabit per second speeds uh, today and uh, uh, there's uh, new initiatives to push that even higher. We also have the fiber to the home technologies, the PON passive optical networking te technologies which are a shared access technology and uh, those have pushed up in the last period into 10 and 40 gigabit per second uh, shared access over a passive optical mm. uh, link uh, split out into, into multiple premises. L let me pick up on, on one of the points that you made there about, uh, the, 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 about the transport layer. And uh, the, the Economist reckons that 95% of all international traffic runs over uh, fiber optics. Uh, how much uh, of a role do ITUT standards play in, in, in that and in facilitating that 95%? It's an enormous amount of uh, international traffic. Well, first of all, I'm surprised it's only 95% <laughs> because I, th I think we're all aware of, of the, uh, the undersea and the terrestrial uh, uh, fiber optic ca uh, cable infrastructure that, uh, that supports that connectivity. And I think uh, that these days, at, at the speeds things are running, virtually all of that is fiber. And Study Group 15 deals with, uh, with several aspects of that infrastructure. First of all, the cables themselves, the fiber optic uh, cable uh, installation, maintenance of, of that cable infrastructure, a lot of that comes from Study Group 15. So whether what's actually running over that fiber infrastructure is, is an ITU standard or not, uh, a lot of the fiber specifications do come from, from study group 15. So even Ethernet, you read the, uh, the Ethernet standards, you'll find uh, references to uh, ITUT fiber types uh, as uh, what is being used by that Ethernet uh, infrastructure. But furthermore, in the, uh, in the transport network itself, uh, even if it's carrying uh, something like Ethernet, to go any distance, generally it's optical transport network standards, which, which are also under the responsibility of Study Group 15. So the way you uh, manage and maintain uh, and uh, the way you combine uh, traffic uh, that goes over those fiber optic cables, uh, a great deal of that is, is Study Group 15. 
uh, moving into the home as well. Uh, of course, uh, uh, a lot of the key uh, uh, access technologies mm -hmm. are, are study group 15. Y you mentioned already that uh, we're, we're, we're pushing the boundaries of, of, of what's possible with, with uh, all of that copper that's, that's still out there. And vectoring technologies and VDSL2 is, is, is about where we are with that now. But is it possible to squeeze more out of uh, the copper infrastructure? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, there there is a, a, a work item under development now, uh, GFAST, uh, trying to push those uh, speeds uh, up to uh, one gigabit per second. So, uh, uh, so uh, y yes, that work continues, and uh, uh, at as at other levels of the network, uh, we're pushing the speeds faster and faster. One more question uh, that, that I, I think relates a little bit to the access technologies that we've talked about, but there's some work in study group 15 that focuses on the vertical sector, and this is the, the, the smart, smart grid. Uh, and I, I'm wondering if that work is, is something that's going to progress into the next study period, and, and whether or not there are any other vertical areas that uh, study group 15's uh, standards will, will help to facilitate. Uh, the the uh, uh, aspect of smart grid that we're involved in is communications for smart grid. Uh, obviously, there are many different organizations that are involved with the whole ecosystem of how that works. And uh, the reason that we are a natural place for the communications for smart grid is that we have the standardization both in the access network and in the home. Uh, in the home network, uh, the uh, transmission speeds within the home were working up into the one gigabit per second range. But in the area of smart grid, we have uh, two technologies that we've been uh, uh, progressing so far in order to provide that connectivity and the, and the control uh, interface into the home. We have uh, power line transmission modulation, and then there's also a uh, short reach uh, narrow band uh, digital radio transmission that, uh, that accomplishes that, that are uh, 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 technologies that we're providing to uh, enable uh, that smart grid kind of uh, infrastructure. Okay, uh, but perhaps finally though, uh, uh, are there any other areas that you'd like to highlight that uh, you don't think that you, you, you've covered? Well, m moving forward, uh, when uh, when you push things faster, uh, what you tend to do is uh, is to do it again. So uh, we've uh, we've moved in the last period, as I said, up to the 100 gigabit uh, speeds per wavelength. We've done that by uh, deployment of a lot of uh, very exciting advanced new modulation formats, and in the next period. Uh, together with uh, with some of the work in IEEE, uh, we uh, we expect to be pushing that to, to 400 gigabits per second and beyond. Wow. Uh, essentially, by evolving and, and refining uh, some of the uh, the general approaches that we've done uh, in the past. Okay. Well, thanks very much for your time, Steve, and uh, good luck in your in your new role. Thank you.